Jesus, 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 precious Savior, Jesus, kings and kingdoms, they shall all pass away. But there is something about your name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. There is something about your name. Your mama said, you are my savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. But there is something about your name. There is something about your name. Oh, there is something about your name. His kingdoms, they shall rope pass away. And there is something about your name. You're the savior of my soul. Your name is Jesus. Oh yes, Lord. Jesus, you're the savior of my soul, you are the Savior of my soul. You are the Savior of my soul. And your name is Jesus. Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Jesus, you're the Savior of my soul. And you are the Savior of my soul. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus. Under the bush, Oh, you're the savior of my soul. Shake up, Baba. Kura, shake it, Baba. You are the savior of my soul. You are the shepherd of my soul. Yes, you are. Your name is Jesus, son of God, son of man. Your name is Jesus, son of the Bushikara. You're the savior of my soul. You are the savior. Muka handoli sita dadi anderesha. Mulia baba lotika mosuma. You're the savior of my soul. You are the shepherd of my soul. You are the shepherd of my soul. You are the shepherd of my soul. Mama, mama, mama. You're the savior of my soul. You 
are the delight of my soul. My soul longs after thee. My soul long after thee. Early in the morning will I rise up and seek thee. So because you will be my soul Under the shadow of the highway I will rejoice My soul delights in you, my King My soul delights in you, my Savior My soul delights in you, my Father my soul, my soul, shake da 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 ya. Yili baba lo suna la mako ba 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 ba. Shandele li la la ba suna na ima. Mama ndorua mama ma. Jehovah, Jehovah. Your name is so great, Jehovah, I shall die, Jehovah, your name is so great, Jesus, Son of God, Jesus, the Lord of Judah, Jesus, precious name, Jesus, you are King, blessing Jesus, Jesus, precious name, Jesus. The Lamb of God, Jesus, King of all kings, Jesus, you are my King, you are my song, you're my music, you're my joy. You are my peace. You are my everything. All I have is you. You are my, I am yours. Lord, I give my heart. Now I am yours. Yes, Lord. I give you my will. Cause I am yours. I surrender to you, my King. Have your way, oh Lord, you are my King. You are my song, you are my word that I seek. You are my joy, you are my peace, you are my everything. All I have is yours, yes, Lord. You are my Lord. I am yours. I am yours, O oh Lord. I am yours. Everything I have is yours. Everything I am is all because of you. Everything I have, all because of you, all that I can do. I do it for you, Lord. I will lift up my voice and declare your kindness. I will lift up my voice and declare your mercy, which flows like a river and wine. Healing comes from your word. Peace comes from your word. Joy abound that comes from the listening of your word. And therefore, even as we gather this afternoon with God, my cry is that reveal yourself to your people. 
I'll be my brother first. Reaching out to the rich and saving the unsaved. So heal to me, Holy Spirit. Heal to me. Love through me this afternoon, oh God. Save your people through my voice, oh God. If you're looking for somebody to love him, Lord, why don't you look on my way? If you're looking for somebody to bless him this afternoon, oh God, I pray. As you look on my way, people who have turned in to listen to you, Father, reveal your heart to them. Let them come to know how much you love them. Let them come to know how much you want them to be part of your plans. Let them come to know that you are the only delight that they need to seek for. Have your way, O oh God. Have your own way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Beloved, you're welcome to end time holiness teachings my name as usual is brother gabriel i don't need much introduction today is the 8th of june 2017 very very important day in the history of uk very very important day as I said earlier on, UK is going to polling station to vote for a new leader and a new era. A man that would take UK out of European Union. A man that will handle how UK law in the next years, at, three, at least three, four, five, six years, probably if Jesus tarries. We don't know what today is going to be at the end of the day. Mm. Unfortunately, I can't vote because I'm a foreigner in the UK. I am a foreigner. I'm a foreigner. Because I'm a foreigner, I'm not allowed to vote. The general election, I can't vote. What do I mean I'm a foreigner? I am not a citizen of United Kingdom. My citizenship is not from this country. Somebody will say, but you're an African, therefore you could vote because you come from commonwealth no i am not a citizen of commonwealth so i can't vote i can't vote because i'm a foreigner in this country there are so many things i can't do i can live here and work but i don't exercise much rights as uk citizens since my citizenship is not from this country, I am very, very careful. I am very, very careful because any law can kick me out of this country. Any law against foreigners can take me out of this place. Therefore, I need to be very cautious. Mm. Beloved, we must be very careful because we don't come from this earth. We are strangers. We are not people that belong to this country, earth. We are all foreigners. And therefore, let us be very, very careful how we allowed things in this earth to tempt us. Today I want to talk about, since we are partakers of the divine nature, let us be very careful how we yield to temptation. 
how we yield, how we allow temptation to take us on our word. Kindly turn your Bible with me, if you please, to the book of James, chapter number 1. Brother James was one of the first disciples of Jesus Christ that died for their faith. Some be to God that before he died, the Lord has granted him this great favor. To leave a fingerprint that people might be able to read. We don't know when Brother James wrote this book for us. James chapter number 1. James portion in the Bible is one of the greatest book. Because James helped us to understand a secret that many of us <coughs> might have not considered as important. Where is the book of James? Why can't I find my James so quick? James chapter 1, the verse number 12 downward says this. Blessed, a person to be envied at, a person whose ways must be jealous a person who live a perfect life a person that God ple pleases God a person that everything that he does attract God a person who has won the favor of God is a bride of Christ who endure temptation who endure temptation for when he is tried he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that loved him. The Lord has promised many promises, and one of the higher promises for the bride of Christ is that there is a crown of glory, a crown of divine glory that reflects our human body. The moment we wear the crown, it changes every aspect of us. Last night, I was, I was a little bit sad. I said, Lord, you have shown me so many things, but you haven't shown me my house in heaven. Do I have one? You promised me of the, all these crowns that you've never shown me before. So I was a little bit sad i was thinking about it i said lord please show me give me some kind of peace and assurance that what i'm teaching others you have something for me you've taken me to heaven but you never brought me to my house you never shown me my house taking me to heaven in different occasion but you've never showed me things that you have for me once I was meditating upon this, the peace of God that surpasses understanding came upon my spirit. I said, son, you don't need to know it. Believe that you have one. I believe that was the peace that caused me not to fall into the spirit of worry. Temptation comes in a way that we least expect. What is temptation? I call temptation as a bait, as a suggestion and thought, desire and feelings that comes to challenge the promises of God in our lives. That come to challenge the good will of God and test us away from where God wants us to be. Temptation comes every now and then in our lives. But if we don't know that it is temptation, we may destroy our souls before it is too late. Blessed is the man 
when he is being tempted, when he is being lured into falsehood, when he is being lured to sin against his soul, temptation uh, come or come by Satan. He is the one that brings temptation. Every human being who is living on earth and had ever lived on earth had had a portion. It comes in many forms. And wear a mask that you will never know. It comes with different faces. Ladies and gentlemen, the question is, why does Satan tempt us? He tempts us so that we will forfeit the promises of God for our life. Temptation comes because of the word of God. The word of God spoken in advance concerning our lives. Satan doesn't want us to enjoy those things. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever faced temptation before? Apostle James said, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. God doesn't bring temptation. Satan brings temptation. No. We are not tempted by God because God cannot be tempted. God cannot be tempted. One thing that cannot be done with God is tempt God. God, I've never said that people are tempting me. We verse God, we anger God, we rebel against God, but we can't tempt Him. Because there is no sin in Him. So we can't tempt Him. Satan tempted Jesus Christ because Jesus has become man. And there was sin in man. But Satan didn't know that Jesus is not going to yield to the desire of man. Jesus is not going to respond to Satan through the desire of man. But he is going to respond to him with the desire of God. Jesus coming in the form of man made him 100% man. But he refused to yield to Matthew chapter number 4. When Satan brought him into the wilderness. Well, I'm sorry. When the Holy Spirit brought him into the wilderness. For Satan to tempt him. When. He was following after Satan. Where Satan. Wanted to run away from him. Either the temptation was physical. Or mental. The temptation took place. In a place of wilderness. Since it was wilderness, it was physical. The Bible says that blessed is the man who refuses to yield. To give in. That is the word. To give in. To yield means to give in. To embrace. Woo! Mm. Don't give in. Satan tempts us through our fleshly desire. The part of human body that can be tempted is the flesh, highest level of all, and the soulish realm. Brother James says, For anyone who is being tempted is not tempted by God, because God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempt he any man. He can be tempted with evil, Neither does he have any reason to tempt man. If God is going to tempt us, ladies and gentlemen, he is going to tempt us to read our Bible. He is going to tempt us to walk in holiness. He is going to tempt us to walk in righteousness. Which is not temptation. But which is what we were born to be. The said sin, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Verse 14, but every man is tempted when he draw away of his own lust. Every man is tempted when he is being pulled away. Pulled away. Draw
driven by your lust, not driven by your passion to serve God, not driven by your desire to make heaven, but you are driven by your self-centeredness. You are driven by your lustful desire, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of this life. They pull us. Satan will use those things to beat us. Your lust. Your lust. What does it mean? Does it mean that I attract temptation most of the time? Yes. I open the door for Satan to tempt me. I make myself available for that temptation to take place. Are all temptation the same? When Satan sees that there is an opportunity, he brings those temptations to us. We are driven by our physical weaknesses. And that does not necessarily mean that we are the one that arrange that. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. Satan is the one that arranges it. When he sees that there is opportunity, there is a chance that he can get you. When you are poor, you don't have money. The highest level that Satan will tempt you with money, it can come in different form. It can come by scholarship. It can come by act of kindness by somebody. It can come by a bit. It can come by introduction of business. It can come by introduction of, uh, of partnership or whatsoever it is. It comes in different ways. Satan will bring it because he sees that something. When you are in need of a husband, you need a wife. Oh yes, your flesh is sending information to your mind that you can't live alone, alone for all this while. You need somebody around you. You need a girlfriend. You need a boyfriend. You need a husband, but Satan will not present a husband to you today and you marry him or her. And therefore he will present a bead of lustful desire in you. When we have something in us that looks attractive to what Satan has for us, he will introduce temptation to us. Every man when he is tempted, when he is drawn away, he is drawn away by his own lust and enticed thing that satan brings to us entices us he will come into your mind he will come into your mind by bringing suggestions thoughts ideas and information that looks so pure and pious that looks so good and so great that those things will benefit you those things are for your promotion. Those things are for your blessings. Those things, if you have it, you'll be well. That was why he told Eve. That the day that you eat this forbidden fruit, your eyes will be open. You will become like God. You will know what is good and evil. Satan will not present temptation to you that will not benefit you. Satan will not bring present, does not bring any presentation to you that will not fit you. That will not make you happy. That will not make you glad. That will not satisfy you. But ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't satisfy your spirit, but it satisfies your flesh. That is what Bible say. Every temptation that Satan comes and brings to us are the satisfaction of our fleshly desire, not our spiritual desire. So be very careful yielding to temptation. You are not yielding to spiritual things that will promote your spiritual benefit, but you are yielding to something that will destroy. Romans 8 says, Whatsoever the flesh desire, fight against the spirit. So when I yield to temptation, when I become alert and I wait, let it come. Oh yes, come. Come, Satan, come and let it down together. When you yield to those foolishness, you are yielding to the doom of your spirit. Be careful. There is a man in the Bible that when we're talking about temptation, he stood in times 
of the highest temptation that every man can ever have. A beautiful Mrs. Potiphar approached a handsome man, Joseph, innocent and naive, a virgin who have never given up his body to a woman before. A man who doesn't know evil in all his ways. His heart was pure. When God revealed to him that he is going to be a leader among his brethren. His brothers couldn't hold on to that. They couldn't accept that. They couldn't recognize that. They couldn't embrace that. Satan doesn't want to embrace your lordship. Satan doesn't want to embrace your being partaker of the divine kingdom. He wouldn't accept that. Our Joseph brother never accepts it. One day, people that I want to interrogate and I want to learn something from them are the brethren of Joseph. As many of them that made heaven, I want to sit down with them and ask them, Why did you do what you did? Why did you send your brother? Why did you want that to eliminate? You wanted to do away with your brother and put him into such a situation that if God had not come in and turned all your adversaries and all your desire into his will, your brother would have been destroyed forever and ever. Why will you do that? Genesis chapter 39, verse number 7 to 9. And it came to pass after three things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on joseph and she said lie with me lie with me come and sleep with me come and sleep with me but he refused and said to his master's wife look my master doesn't know what is with me in this house he has committed all things that he has into my care. There is nothing greater in this house than I. Nor has he kept back anything from me, but only you. The only thing that my master has kept away from me is you. I have no right to touch your body. I have no right to have intimacy with you. You may not consider it something sacred, but I do. You may not consider it as something holy, but I do. Ladies and gentlemen, that act is the most dangerous act in human's life. It's the most dangerous covenant that a person will set his feet in. It looks so harmless. It looks so harmless, but it is dangerous. Many have died. Any person that commit that act, any person that does that sin, he is taking out one of the sharpest, one of the most dangerous sin that a man will commit is sleeping with somebody who is not his God ordained, God approved partner for that relationship. Understand that. Joseph said, the only thing that my master have withdrawn from me is you. Ladies and gentlemen, Joseph continued to say this. How? How? How can I do this because you are his wife? He was the wife of my master. And how can I do such a great wickedness and sin against my God? When temptation comes, understand that it is not an opportunity to enlarge your course it is not an opportunity to develop your skills it is not an opportunity to become rich temptation is not an opportunity for self upliftment but rather it is self destruction every temptation that a man yield himself to will destroy his soul therefore bride of christ bride of christ be careful with the door of opportunity that comes on your way that become a bid and that become enticements. The Bible said that the woman continued to entice Joseph. Joseph, Joseph continuously have the woman 
enticing her, him. Until one night, one afternoon, when there was nobody there, now the woman made everything ready. What do you want? Look at such a glorious and beautiful body. Sister, do you know what you are doing? You are enticing somebody. And only Satan does it. Showing your nakedness to a man that doesn't deserve. Showing your nakedness, sister. Brother, showing your nakedness to a person who dare not to have it. Aren't you, Satan? Aren't you, Satan? Let no one say that when he is tempted, he is being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone with evil. Brother, sister, the brother, the sister that you want to marry, why do you want to go in with temptation? Why? We'll be tempted in many times. We'll be tempted in many occasions. Thank be to God that when we yield to those temptations, the Lord still forgive us. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of God said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, Do not deprive one another except with a consent for a time. That you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan doesn't tempt you because of your lack of self control. This is when Brother Paul was talking about fasting between relationships. Husband and wife living together. One of the highest temptations in relationship is that a woman would deprive his husband intimacy. Sister, don't do that. Don't do that. Every man tempted, if it is not the grace of God. If that man doesn't smell evil, he will fall into that. And that temptation, when it is coming, brother, you throw it here, but Satan will put it here. Don't give one little reason that you would take advantage over this. Never. The highest form not to fall into that temptation is... Not to think any advantage on that. Don't use it as an opportunity. Sister, you have given birth. After two, three months, you know that now you are strong to embrace your husband. Why don't you do it? I don't want to give birth again. Yeah. So you marry me because you want to give children. And now that you don't want to have any children again, you don't want me to fulfill my sensual desires. Where do you want me to go and throw it? You're a liar, darling. Do you want us to divorce? No, Bible said that we shouldn't divorce. Who told you that every act of intimacy leads to childbirth? <laughs> do you know how many people have given thousand children? Don't allow Satan to lie to you. Don't deprive your spouse, your physical uh, touch. I know you women, you don't like the main act so much. You like hugging. You like sitting together and talking together. That's fine. After I have given you yours, me, if you sit down and talk to me, sometimes they go just like that. <laughs> so they mean nothing to me. What means something to me is when you come closer to me. When you embrace me and give me a breath that satisfies my fleshly desire. When my flesh is aching. When my flesh is decreasing in temperature. You must be there. Beloved, the reason for marriage. I'm talking about this because the highest temptation that brothers and sisters we go through. Is when it comes to these physical weaknesses that men mostly have it. Have mercy, sisters. Have mercy. Roman fathers, they have the same thing. They are claiming that they don't have any desire for women. They are liars. They are thieves and arm robbers. That is why every Roman father is going to hell. Because they have diverted the plans of God and they are declaring lies. Apostle Paul said that if it's possible, because of fornication, let every person marry. Higher, we're talking about the highest temptation that caused many people, that have led many people to hellfire. 
is the sexual temptation that drives man to do what he is not supposed to do. That have caused many men to rape children. That have caused many women to disgrace themselves. When that fleshly desire comes, ladies and gentlemen, if care is not taken, you will yield to that temptation. But the Bible says that blessed is the man that doesn't. Blessed is a Christian, a child of God, that doesn't yield to temptation. Beloved, let us come to the level to understand that temptation will not come until there is an open door. The Bible talks about in 2 Peter chapter number 2, verse 14 and verse 18, having eyes full of idolatry, and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable soul. They have heart trained in covetous practice and are accursed children. Satan has filled many women on earth today. Their eyes are full of idolatry. So they come with enticing desire and feelings and motion. Today when you go to church, ladies and gentlemen, average married women are enticing men. Old men are suffering in the church. Old men are suffering in the church because Satan has sent 100% women in the church to entice men. If God is to open the heart of the preacher who is standing there and preaching, and what is going through his mind to you, you will move away from that church. No wonder the pastors are sleeping with their church members 24-7. Because the fleshly desire in us, if it is not tamed by the word of God, it doesn't have satisfaction. Every woman is appealing to a man. No matter how young the woman may be. Unless the mind is sealed. Unless the mind is sealed by the Holy Spirit. But when the mind is sealed with sin. Ladies and gentlemen, such man is easily. Ready to give to his fleshly desire. First, this can be eighteen. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they are lured through the loss of the flesh, through lewdness. The one who have actually escaped from those who live in error. Ladies and gentlemen, today women have glossy lips, enticing face, demonic and seductive appearances. I was talking to one sister and the sister said, oh, Brother Gabriel, you tempt me every day, but you don't know. I said, really? <laughs> he said, the way you shave your beard tempts me. I think in those days, I was not leaving my beard like this. From that day, I started leaving the beard like that. I know some women go through also the same thing. But let us be very careful how we approach other people, other people's husband and how we approach other people's wife. That is why it is called for for pastors to establish divine holiness, outward holiness. Outward holiness. The moment your eyes catches seductive spots on a woman, some people have a beautiful, attractive face. Some have figure. Some have uh, what we call legs. Every aspect, every part of a woman can seduce a man. Woman, you don't know. You don't know. That is why the Lord said, cover it. But brother, brother, if, 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 that we need to cover all our face. Sister, if that is how it's supposed to be. One of our sisters was telling me, she was crying, nearly crying. She said, I follow my husband to shopping center. He said, brother Gabriel, I've stopped all these dirty things that you've warned me. I've stopped them. But when I go to shopping, men are running after me together with my husband. I said, let me pay. Let me pay for you. You see how far men can be driven. He said, I was going to drop my shoot my child to school. And one of my neighbors standing together with her, his wife. And the man was just looking at me as if I have just landed on earth. As if I am the only woman who is on earth and that man is being starved. Holding his wife. And the woman just kicked the man. <laughs> Doggy. Come along, doggy doggy. Some men are like dogs. 
they can never satisfy their sinful appetite. So, darling, be very careful. Be very careful. He is a deceiver and he deceiving people every day. And no wonder that the Bible said that at least he would take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. All his devices is to deceive. Oh yes, what she has is different from what your wife has. It's a liar. It's a cheat. It's a deceiver. It's a liar. At the end, what results will you get the same results build up your mind against temptation don't fall into sexual temptation brother don't fall into financial temptation don't fall bread of Christ this is not a time to give in to lasciviousness he is always looking to take advantage of us the sister said Pastor Gabriel, when I was coming home, I decided to go far because I saw that they were still standing there. So I decided to change my direction. I said, darling, you've done well. You've saved somebody's soul. So sometimes my husband becomes so jealous. Oh, my dear. When I go to some places, some people, to me, it's women that, that actually uh, uh, praise my wife to me. So it doesn't affect me much. <laughs> And I have this benefit of doubt. I have this benefit of doubt that my wife will not go out and entice people. And I don't think that my wife also will face any kind of uh, of, uh, of uh, competition. She knows that my heart is hers and the Lord's. When we have single hearted dedicated unto God, we are not afraid. Ladies and gentlemen, temptation stands to come on our way. Joseph was tempted. Why? Because of the word of God in him. Not because he was feeling lust. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, For who do not have high priests? We do have a high priest who cannot be sympathized with our weaknesses. But was in all point tempted as we are yet without sin. Jesus Christ had to go through temptation. His temptation wasn't that he has sin in him. But he was running after sinners. And since he had the body of sin, yet he refused to yield to that sin. 1 Peter uh, uh, 1 verse 19. 1 Peter 1 19 says, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of the Lamb without blemish and without spots, he had nothing sinful in him. He lived sinless life. There was nothing in him that caused and attracts sin. But everything in him attracts sinners to him. Sinners saw that they would have hope in him. He became the delight of sinners. He became the peace of sinners. He became the one that will satisfy their longing soul. He became the resting place of sinners. So his life draws sinners unto him. He said, come. All ye are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come and enter into my rest. Jesus refused to give his attraction to sin. Rather, he gave his attraction to sinners. Understand that temptation is not sin. By yielding, giving, accepting, allowing temptation to talk over you is sin. Sister, you are being tempted. You are being tempted. You know this. Now this brother is a threat. Don't give one minute to temptation. Walk away. The best way to overcome temptation is to flee. Or to speak back to temptation. Get behind me. Jesus committed no sin. Nor was any deceit found in him. Nothing error. First Peter chapter two verse twenty two says that nothing sinful was found in him. Nothing evil was found in him. He had Satan attracted him. The only thing that was found in him was that he was a symbol, symbol that all sinners will look into, look up onto, and be delivered from their sin. Ladies and gentlemen. Temptation is a highway to sin. 
Temptation is the highway to sin. Satan will come and masquerade. He would take different form. He would take different personality. He can become your boss that you desire. He can become your money that you want. He can become the wife that you want. He can become the husband that you want. He can become everything that your soul thing that can give delights. How Jesus is everything that we need. Satan wants to become whatever we want. He knows that he is not our needs. He can become our wants. And therefore, therefore in this world, we stand to go through temptation. But bride of Christ, avoid yielding to temptation. How can I? You can avoid it by not loving this world and anything in them. Because everything in this world belongs to Satan. If anybody loves this world and think that they are in, he cannot contain or receive or enjoy the love of the Father. For all that is in this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Genesis chapter 3. All that is in this world that Satan showed Adam and Eve in a form of a tree of knowledge and good and evil. Satan will present himself to us through knowledge of good. Through knowledge of good, he will hide the evil parts. And that is why Brother John, Apostle John said, Love not the world in John chapter number 2, first John chapter 2, 15 to 17, very famous scripture for holiness teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are being tempted, don't see that it is weaknesses. Most of the reason why we yield to temptation is that we think that it is our weaknesses. Stand, 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 stand. It is not your weaknesses, sir. It is not. It is a temptation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond your ability. But when the tempter comes, when the temptation comes, when it is arises, the Lord will raise up your standard. The Lord will let you see things in different way. We are so being tempted, but when they come, the Lord will let us see it in different way. When your mind is not renewed, Every man that looks towards you, you think that that man thinks that you are beautiful and that man wants something from you. That is demonic thinking. Brother, when your mind is not renewed, every lady that does any act of kindness to you, you must think that a woman wants to entice me with an act of kindness. When our mind is not renewed, blessing that people do to us becomes something that contaminates us on our world. The out of kindness that people are doing towards us tend to become a bit into demonic roadway. Renew your mind. Why is he doing this thing? Why is he blessing me with this? Why? Some of us, we hate blessings of God. Because the blessings of God that comes, it attracts our weaknesses. Oh yes, some of them they are. When you see that the sister is giving you up, Every time she sees you, her eye try to change that conversation. I met a young lady at work and I saw lust all over her face. Quietly she asked me, do you live around my area? I said, no, I'm sorry. You might be exchanging me for somebody else. The next time she gave me another eye, I took it off. So I'm not interested for this. What do you have for me? Last, get behind me, Satan. Speak back. When you are being tempted, don't take it out. Oh, he, he, she find me, she fancy me. That's a dirty word. She entices you, not fancy. The devil is a liar. When you are being tempted, oh, this is a, this is a blood line. Yes, we try to trace it when you go to deliverance. You are being tempted with liquor. You are being tempted with alcohol. Brother, do you know every person that drink alcohol can never make heaven? No way. No way! Because it's not from God. Let my wife cook food with alcohol. That's fine. 
But a godly woman who doesn't drink alcohol will never cook food. Unless you like it. <laughs> Barbara Gabriel, yes, sister, if you know that it is alcohol, don't cook with that. Don't drink it, therefore, don't eat it. Oh, we need to steam. We need to what steam what? Without putting alcohol in that food, would it not taste good for you? You are giving spirit, so is spirit in your children's unaware. Alcohol is from Satan. It is poison from the devil. Why do you cook with poison? Those of you who are watching uh, 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 this how to cook food, European food, back home in Africa, sister, my mother cook with water. Nowhere did my mother go and buy a petition to come and cook. Nowhere will my mother go and buy palm wine or pito. I'm talking about <laughs> Ghanaian local wines. Never a day did my mother cook with one. Never a day. <laughs> we didn't even have sugar in our in our porridge. Yeah, we enjoyed it. When we are being tempted, don't yield to it. Don't fancy it. Don't desire in it. Don't take appetite in it. Run away from it. I've been drinking all my life. You are fool. You didn't know that you were fool. Alcoholics are fools. Every alcoholic is going to hell. Every person that drinks is going to hell. Remove it. What about red wine, yellow wine, green wine, white wine? Sister, wine is wine. Alcohol is alcohol. Avoid it if you want to make heaven. God is going to give us heavenly food, but alcohol is not part of it. The Lord doesn't drink it. Anything fermented, Jesus was one. Anything fermented, uh, the mother of the Savior, the mother of uh, 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 John the Baptist, the mother of, uh, of, of, of Samson, they were all one. Don't drink or eat anything fermented. Barbara Gabriel, uh, Apostle Paul told Timothy that because of your stomach ache, are you Timothy? Brother Samson, Brother Jude, Brother Felix, are you Timothy? Run away. The devil is a liar. Don't yield to sin. One of the main reasons why Satan tempts us. Ladies and gentlemen, he wants to hurt God. He wants to hurt us. He wants to hurt people around us. Come to the level to understand this. When you are being tempted, you are being tempted because Satan wants to destroy your soul. We are being tempted because Satan knows the only way to ruin our life. In John chapter 10 verse 10, the Bible said, The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. These three reasons. He wants to steal you from God. He wants to kill your hearts from God. And he wants to destroy you. Satan wants to influence us. Satan wants to influence us. He knows that the only thing that he can do to hurt God and to hurt us eternally is to cause us to sin. Satan knows that sin can ruin our destiny forever and ever. He knows. He knows. And that's all that Peter said. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, he walks around like a running lion seeking for whom he may get to devour. Be careful. Be careful. Ladies and gentlemen, sin is a cost. Sin is the greatest cost to humanity. He knows that it will cost our soul everything. It will cost our eternal life. It, oh, my darling, my dear brother and sisters, know the cost and avoid the cost. Romans chapter 7, verse 3, 23. Romans 6, 23 says the reward of sin is death, suppression from God. Any woman that comes into my life wants to destroy my marriage. She is not there to give me anything different from what my wife has for me. Only problem. <laughs> she is just bringing more problem. 
Problem because she is going to bring so many uncertainty, so many sorrow, so many pains to my soul. And therefore, as a married man, I don't look at a woman as beautiful. I look at a woman as a problem. As a marriage woman, I look at a man as problem. What has he got to give? Another burden, another problem. One thing that I have come to understand when we were walking in sin, sin is very appetizing. I was handling a brother and sister. That the sister feel reluctant. She feel pains. Emotional, psychological pain. Whenever she go closer to the husband. It's a burden. And Satan a liar. And these are brothers and sisters. Who have married for 10, 12 years. 10, 12 years married. They live in sin. Over 15 years before coming into marriage. From that time. Whenever the man is ready or not. Because she wanted that man to marry her. When we are walking in sin, sin is a pleasure. When we come into holiness and righteousness, ladies and gentlemen, righteousness is painful. When righteousness becomes painful, we hurt our soul unaware. Sister, sleeping with your marriage husband is not sin. It's not sin. It becomes sin only when. It becomes sin only when we do it in the doggy way. It becomes sin only when we do it in unacceptable way. It becomes sin when we embrace it in snake manner. But when we do it in the way that God wants us to do it, when we do it in, at the time that God wants us to do it, it is not sin. God have delight in that when husband and wife meet. Don't yield to temptation. Don't yield to temptation of a desire. That tells you that you become powerful than you are. Satan cannot make you powerful. Satan can make you weak and destroy you. I want you to understand he is not all powerful. He can be defeated. Therefore submit to God and resist him. How can I overcome? Submit to the will of God for your life and resist sin. The day you and me, James chapter 4 verse 7 says that. The day you and me will resist the will of God, living holy life is not something difficult at all. I have come a time in my life that growing closer to my wife, there were so many thoughts that was going in. But now when I'm drawing closer, I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed any longer. When you are walking in sin, when you have something hidden within you, you don't feel free. The reason why you don't enjoy the relationship between you and your husband because you have allowed Satan to come into that relationship. He is feeding you with your thoughts. He is sleeping with you spiritually unaware. When you are engaging spiritually with demons, ladies and gentlemen, you hate drawing closer to your husband. You hate. I've taken my time to talk about this thing because that is a big problem in the relationship. Many Christians are suffering. When they were boyfriend and girlfriend, they could do everything. Average people on earth hate marriage now. If opportunity is given to non-believers, I bet you, and Christians as well. If divine opportunity is granted unto man, I thank God that the Lord said in his book, I hate divorce, period. No argument and no question. And therefore, a child of God should not bring the divorce case before God because it is a case that has been adjourned 2,000 years ago, before you and me were born. It has been dismissed. It has been sealed. Let us come to God because victory is in the blood. Victory is in our submission to the will of God. We can only overcome temptation when we submit to God. When we submit to God, He will lift us up in time of season. When we submit to God, resist the devil, Satan will flee from us. Jesus has provided us a chance and opportunity to overcome. And the chance and opportunity to overcome is to yield to the word of God. What is the Bible saying concerning my choices? What is the Bible saying concerning my feelings and my desire? What does the word of God say in regards 
to what we are thinking or feeling. Don't allow, don't allow Satan to deceive you. Go all ways of Satan leads to destruction. Escape roots of our temptation is submitting to the mind of God, submitting to the promises of God. Ladies and gentlemen, when we submit to our lust, we'll be destroyed. When we submit to our senses, we'll be destroyed. <laughs> When we submit to our desires, we will be destroyed. When we submit to lies, we will be destroyed. But when we become patient and endure the attack that Satan is bringing us, it is for temporal. Every temptation is temporal, it's not eternal. Satan will not tempt us until we die. But until we die, he will keep on coming and going and coming and going. In Matthew chapter number 4, the Bible says that Satan left Jesus Christ for a moment. He does not perpetually leave a child of God alone. And therefore, a child of God needs to live in repentance and the renew of our mind. Let us renew our mind and see sin in the hands of Satan, not in the hands of God. God does not entice us with sin. God has not blessed us in sin. Oh, this is a blessing. Sister, that's not a blessing. That's not a blessing. That woman, what she is giving to you, you are going to pay it back. I never knew. I never knew. I never knew. When I was a young boy, I never knew. The open up to so many girls were going to bring me in uncertainty. And it's going to bring me into hurts. I've hurt myself and I hurt others. They gave me gift and I accepted it. They gave me admiration and I accepted it. They wanted me to be their friends and I accepted it. And when I remember all of them, it pains my heart. Should I be so unkind? No. But when they come, give them the word of God. It's only the word of God that will separate sin between us. When they come, give them the word of God. Let them know the mind of God for their lives. The God expectation is that we will walk away from sin. Ladies and gentlemen, let us be very careful. Temptation comes when we are asleep spiritually on our word. Therefore, let us be alert. Let us be alert. Let me finish with Matthew chapter 13 verse 25. Jesus Christ was given a parable concerning the kingdom of heaven. And he likened it unto a sower. That went and sow a seed in the field. But when he slept, when his servant slept, when every person slept, the wicked person also came and sowed tears. When we leave our mind at a position where the word of God has been dismissed from work, when we take our mind from the word of God, we open the doorway of demonic entrance to baffle our hearts and our mind. Don't sleep. Don't give rest to your mind concerning the word of God. So when people slept, the enemy came and sowed seed. He came and sowed wheat, a seed, a, a, a tares. And beloved, the tares, purpose of the tares is to destroy. The purpose of a test is to destroy your future. I want you to understand. Let us take care. The enemy is against us. He's maximizing all his devices. He's pulling up, raising up more weapons to sabotage the plans of God for our life. Let us not be prone to the desire of the flesh. Let us not be prone to falling into the hands of sin. Every opportunity that Satan brings in our way, they are bait, they are traps, and they are a way into condemnation. Only the word of God can bring us eternal peace. No wonder that David said, uh, the psalm writer says that word, but I keep in my heart that I may not sin against thee. To avoid sin, 
You need to feed your mind with the word of God. I'll come back tomorrow and give you more about the preparation of the bride. Today, my message was avoid temptation. Don't embrace temptation. Don't yield to temptation. Don't encourage it. Don't see that it is an opportunity. See every temptation. See every bid. See every attraction. Anything that attracts you. Apart from the word of God, anything that attracts you, the law of attraction, want to enslave you. Anything that points an arrow to you is showing you the direction that you need to go. And if that is not the direction that you want to go, you will end into the place where your soul will not rejoice. Father, here we are in your presence, O God. Your message has been preached to your souls that are being prepared for your coming. I pray that let this warning silence every sinful desire in us. Let us see sin in its very naked way. Let us avoid giving our body as a product of temptation. Thank you because you love us in Jesus' name. Beloved, I don't want to close my teachings as usual without giving you this great opportunity to welcome my Savior into your heart and to allow him to become the owner of your soul who is the owner who is leading your life have you yielded to temptation we can yield to temptation when our mind are not fixed on god what is good satan will stop us not to do them what is evil he will employ us to do apostle paul said who deliver me from this power of sin oh wretched man i am what I want to do, I can't do them. What I don't want to do, that is what I do. Do you know the reason why you do what you don't want to do? Because you want to do what you don't want to do. <laughs> that is what you want to do. Deep within you, deep within your heart, whatsoever you want to do, God will give you the strength to overcome that. Saying no to temptation is saying no to eternal destruction. Some of the temptation comes that when we want to part with something that God has for us. The blessing that God has for us. The glory that God has for us. That's all the temptation is about. Part with them. Separate yourself from your husband. Separate yourself from your wife. Stop that work. Stop preaching. Stop church. Stop, 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 stop. When you hear the word stop, stop, stop. Think about what do you, what are you being enticed to stop? Stop living righteous life. Stop living a holy life. Oh, you can be for short time. Stop it for a while. S darling, you don't know when Christ will come. When you stop righteous living, you are entering into sin. Understand that. Any time that you give hand to Satan, you give in hand to eternal destruction. Pray this prayer after me. Let us come to the level to embrace the will of God for our life. Ask God to help us to develop our knowledge and understanding concerning the ways of Satan. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I submit your children, your daughters, your sons, whom you are coming for as a bride, that you have adorned for your own eternal glory. There are so many things, Lord, that we open ourselves for, unknowingly and knowingly. We open ourselves for Satan to destroy us. We step into places that you are not promoting. We step into places that, Lord, you are not leading us. Guide us against all these areas. Guide our hearts against sin, against pride, against lust of this world, and the desire to become whom you have not called us to be. Father, we cry that let the bit of the enemy look so ugly. Open our eyes to see the bit of Satan the way it is, that we may not fall into those temptations. Father, knowledge and wisdom, awareness and understanding is all that we need, that we may be able to embrace what is right and walk in your counsel. Say, Jesus, I welcome you into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my guide. Guide me into all truth, into all righteousness. I commit my heart to you. I bring my mind and my soul. Let it conform to your will. Holy Spirit, search me. Redeem me from anything which is not righteous in your life. Lord, if there is any iniquity within me, if there is any stigma, if there is any little particle in me that will be a bait 
of demonic entrance into my life to destroy my soul, expose them to me, and let me walk away from them. Don't let me rationalize sin. Don't let me see sin as an advantage. Don't let me see sin as a point of joy, as a point of peace, as a point of success. But let me see sin as an entrance of eternal separation from you. Help my soul to live for you. Baptize me with your blazing fire. Set me on course in Jesus' name. Darling, if you have prayed that prayer with me, I believe that the Lord God that I serve had answered those confession. I encourage you to continue to confess. If there is anything going on within you, speak it out. Tell the devil to get out of you. Tell him to get out. Resist him and he will flee. How to resist him is resisting by what God has said concerning you. And throw every challenge that he throws on you away. The Lord has sent his angels around you 24-7. You might not be aware. They are fighting for you. So when you are afraid, stand firm. One area that we also need to do is to tell people about what we are going through. Confine in a man of God and say, Pastor, I am suffering. There is lust that I have, a very strong lust against this person. Sometimes when we tell them, when we tell people that we have strong lust against them, we expose our nakedness. And one thing that Satan hates is when you expose him. Sister, I have a very strong lust towards you. Can a man say that? It's very strong. But if you say it, it will save you. If you can't say it, then tell God, the Lord help me to overcome this thing. It's not good. You can continue to listen to my teachings 24-7 on YouTube. I've got so many videos there that will help you. On Facebook, and I've got my own online radio that is being broadcast 24-7. Please join 24-7 and listen to these teachings. And God will bless you. God bless you, Brahima. He's my senior. Ah, it's a brother that motivates me a lot in the Lord when we were growing up. God bless you. It's a pastor now in Canada. God bless you for joining me. God bless you, Prester Presla. God bless you, Brother Adi. And all of you, brethren, who are watching, Sister Igrid, God bless you. And many of you whose names I can read now. Thank you for listening to these teachings, and I believe we is going to help you. Let us overcome every temptation today, because if we don't call it temptation, we will sleep on that mat, and before we be aware, Satan will have us in his net. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, and we honor you that you sent your word to open our understanding to see things clearly as it is. Help us, O God, to walk away from the grips of the enemy. Help us to live holy, righteous life for you, O God. Take every enticing, take every desire of sin, every element, O God, that causes us to live in contrast to your will. Many have hurt you, O God, but I don't want to hurt you any longer. Therefore, every thought, every feelings, every desire and motivation, O God, that comes in the bed, to attract me to sin against you. Grant me the strength to overcome that. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Tomorrow I'll come back with the holy preparation of the bride of Christ, part 13. God bless you. Bye-bye.